Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Sugar makers across the world rely on the work that's done at the UVM Proctor Maple Research Center in Underhill. As we've reported in recent weeks, the Proctor Center is now celebrating its 75th anniversary. One of the specialists at the center is Extension Maple educator Mark Isselhart. Mark's work centers on a host of issues, including educating people on the color, density, and clarity of maple syrup. Here's Mark to tell us how professionals judge the clarity of their maple. Making quality pure maple syrup requires a lot of hard work and careful attention to detail. From the tree to the bottle, many steps are required to produce the high quality product that sugar makers are known for and customers expect. Hello, this is Mark Isselhart from the University of Vermont Extension Maple Program. There are four grades of pure maple syrup that can be sold in a retail container. They are golden color, delicate taste, amber color, rich taste, dark color, robust taste, and very dark color, strong taste. It is up to the producer or whomever's name appears on the retail container to correctly identify which grade their syrup falls. While color and flavor are the two most distinguishing characteristics of maple syrup, all syrup must meet the legal standard in four categories, color, clarity, flavor, and density. This video will cover the basics of clarity grading maple syrup. During the process of boiling maple sap into syrup, the minerals naturally found in sap become concentrated at the point of saturation. When that point is reached, particles, made mostly of calcium, form and become suspended in the syrup. This suspended material is commonly known as sugar sand. Sugar sand is a broad term used for any material that forms during evaporation. Most of the time, sugar sand gives unfiltered syrup a cloudy appearance and gritty texture. Occasionally, this material will be soft or appear oily. Whatever the form sugar sand takes, it must be removed before being ready for consumption. Maple regu regulations require that only clear, clean maple syrup is allowed in a retail container. Being able to accurately determine if syrup is clear and ready for sale is the job of the sugar maker. From the time-honored cloth gravity filter to modern high-tech filter presses, sugar makers have several methods of filtering their syrup. Acceptable filtering can be achieved with both gravity and pressure filters. Ultimately, the method of filtering is less important than the quality of filtering. Sugar makers need to check each batch of syrup being filtered, even if they've been using a particular method for many years. Not all syrup will filter easily. Producers must pay particular attention when filtering late season syrup, since these tend to be the most difficult batches of syrup to filter. If the syrup coming out of your filter is not clean and clear, there is likely an issue with the filtering equipment or how the filter is set up and the syrup must be filtered again. More sugar sand can form after syrup has been filtered if that syrup is reheated and allowed to boil or is kept hot for a long period of time. Poorly filtered syrup coming from gravity filters may be the result of damage to the fabric material. This damage can occur if the cloth material is excessively twisted or wrung out during cleaning. Pressure filters come in many sizes and styles and rely on a pump instead of the weight of the syrup to force unfiltered syrup through the filter. There can be issues with pressure filters producing poor results. Most of the time, these issues come from improperly setting up the filter or from exceeding the filter's capacity. If you are using a pressure filter, make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for setup and operation. This includes paying close attention to the pressure gauge as it is the best indication of how close the press is to being full. Occasionally, air bubbles associated with the pumping of syrup can make the syrup appear unfiltered or poorly filtered. Allowing samples to sit for a period of time will help determine if the sample is well filtered. 
The following steps can help with the clarity grading process. Only well-filtered syrup can be graded for clarity. Unfiltered or poorly filtered syrup will appear darker than well-filtered syrup and will impact color grading. The most common causes of cloudy syrup are filters not set up or used incorrectly and new sugar sand formed by allowing syrup to heat up excessively. There are resources available if you would like more information or continue to have issues with poorly filtered or cloudy syrup and would like help to determine from where the issue lays. A narrated slideshow titled Fundamentals of Filtering Maple Syrup, as well as other documents related to operation of pressure filters, can be found at the UVM Extension Maple website. Pure maple syrup is a truly special food product. It takes lots of effort and skill to produce the quality product consumers expect. By tasting all the batches of syrup you produce and labeling appropriately, you can make sure that only high quality syrup reaches a retail customer. Please check out more information on this and other issues related to production of pure maple syrup at the University of Vermont Extension Maple page. On behalf of the UVM Extension Maple program, I'm Mark Isselhart. Our thanks to Mark and a salute once again to the UVM Proctor Maple Research Center on its 75th anniversary. One of the many research projects at Proctor involves red maple trees. The sap from red maples is not as sweet as from sugar maples, but the reds can be tapped for production. Across the Fence spoke with the lead researcher to find out more. Really, any species of Acer in the genus Acer, so any species of maple, can be used for maple syrup production if the temperature and climate are right. Um, and one species that we have an abundant amount of all across the maple producing region is red maple. Plenty of producers use red maple as crop trees for maple production, along with their sugar maples, if they have them growing in the stands that they tap for maple production. Um, but there are some sort of holdover barriers to some producers really feeling comfortable adding or using red maple as a crop tree. Um, and so what we're trying to do with this project is to actually collect some data, some real empirical scientific data to dispel some of those, what we almost like to call myths about red maple, to make producers more comfortable and confident to use them as crop trees uh, because they provide, uh, using them as a crop tree provides so many different potential benefits for forests, for maple producers uh, on multiple different levels. How are you collecting this data? One area that we're focusing on is with respect to yield. So the sugar content in red maple sap tends to be a little bit lower than in sugar maple, the sap in sugar maple. Historically speaking, it, before we added technologies like reverse osmosis to maple production, which is used to remove a lot of the water from sap before it gets to the evaporator, collecting red maple sap for syrup production could actually be a pretty inefficient process. So there was lots more water to remove and many producers um, actually just wouldn't include that as a crop species because of the, basically the amount of fuel that it re would require to make syrup out of that. And in part because of that lower sap sugar concentration, there is a thought or sort of almost a feeling that red maples produce less syrup overall than sugar maple. Um, but most of the producers that use red maple as crop trees pretty much know that the yields end up being about the same as sugar maple. So they tend to have lower sap sugar concentration, but they produce way more sap. So at the end of the season, it tends to be about the same overall syrup yield as sugar maple. But the problem is we don't, at least up to now, we didn't have any hard scientific data to prove that that was true. So one of the objectives of this project is to actually quantify the actual yields from red maples when using modern sap collection practices like high levels of vacuum, really good sanitation and things like that. So hopefully we will have some good numbers to document that the yields from red maple are pretty much the same, if not identical to sugar maple. Would a consumer be able to tell the difference between syrup from a red maple as opposed to syrup from a sugar maple? 
Well, that is an excellent question and actually segues into the second part of the study. So one of the other perpe uh, perpetuated myths about or think ways of thinking about red maple is that somehow the flavor of syrup they produce is either different or inferior or that perhaps they make that late season buddy off flavor earlier than red maples. Um, and there's actually zero data to support any of that. And certainly again, we have this case where lots of sugar makers who are using red maple as crop trees already are like, you know, they have the experience that they don't see a difference or any impact on flavor. But without the hard data to support that, it's really hard to say, oh yeah, it's perfectly fine. We're actually doing a um, controlled side-by-side -side experiment in which we have sap collected from purely red maples and purely sugar maples in the same stand. And we will process that sap into syrup simultaneously in our processing research facility, and then do the subsequent sensory analyses to see is there a detectable difference in the flavor of syrup made with red maple and sugar maple sap? So there's a, probably a good chance that we've had red maple sap mixed in with our, our, our regular maple syrup and just didn't know it. Oh, more than 100% chance. Wait, that's impossible. It, <laughs> for certain that you have had syrup that's been made with red maple sap, but we certainly, we tap on a, a lot of red maples at Proctor. So, and lots of producer use, producers use them as crop trees. So you've definitely had red maple syrup for <laughs> sure. How did you get interested in this? What was the scientific uh, interest that you had in this? One of the big draws to it is that it's just one of those things that is not known and we really do need to have some hard data behind it. Red maple, because it is so adaptable to, di to different sites and growing conditions, as things become less favorable or conditions become less favorable for sugar maple, red maple is likely to be a very, very important crop species for maple production in the future. We need to know as much as possible about red maple, both its yield as well as the flavor that it makes. Uh, because it will be a, definitely a very important crop species for the maple industry to adapt and mitigate against climate change for the future. Our thanks to Abby for all her great work. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.